nice to meet you. So for everybody else's benefit, this is Andy Jelmy, who has been working on software set up for the Lollibot. And so, sorry, I won't damage your demo. Uh, so everybody, please make him welcome. And Lollibot software. No, thanks, Nat. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Uh, that really makes it uh, our day, um, seeing everyone build things. And also, a big call out again to the helpers. Uh, you know, year after year, we just wouldn't be able to do it without them. So thanks again. All right, so today, um, or this afternoon, try to try and cover the software to some degree about um, what the pieces are and what you may do to try and get the robot performing to the level that Jan has got his, his going to. So there's a, a few people, Jan, um, Kerry, uh, who else? Um, maybe Steve, built early, who've, 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 um, you can ask him about help. And we'll probably hang out at Building 11 after dinner sometimes. And just uh, so come along and help get your software going. All right. So hardware. So John uh, briefly mentioned the, the hardware. So you've got um, fast, a couple of fast 32 bit processors with lots of flash, Wi Fi and Bluetooth, so networking, lots of IO pins. Um, so uh, ADC, ADCs. Um, digital to analog converters, uh, I2C to talk to IMUs and things, and temperature sensors, and it's just lots of stuff. Uh, so th that's the processor, and it's you know, powerful enough to run MicroPython, which is good. Um, there's also some LEDs, sort of a couple at the front and one at the back, which also acts as a skid plate, so you might need to um, I know, put some hot glue or something on it or to, uh, over time. Um, those LEDs, they're, they're the same as near pixels, but they, uh, the color is, uh, channels are reversed on them, so we've got a little flag in the software. There's also two DC motors, which you control by pulse width modulation. Uh, there's a server motor which is meant to act as a kicker for the ping pong ball. Um, once again, use uh, pulse width modulation to control that. Um, the reflectance sensor is a, you basically use analog input to basically measure the, the light uh, as, a, as a voltage. And then finally, there's a, uh, an IMU, which is an accelerometer gyroscope uh, um, compass. And uh, you talked about it over I2C. So that's kind of the hardware we've got. Um, so software installation. So we've written some instructions. And I'll just see if I can zip across to that page. Um, so this is up on GitHub. And so if you go to the Open Hardware MiniConf wiki, hopefully, uh, uh, maybe a show of hands, uh, who was able to uh, get the software up and running this morning? So maybe about a third, perhaps. All right, well, hopefully after this afternoon, this will give you a sense, uh, everyone else a sense of what to do. And please hit, uh, hit us up during the week if you have any problems. So this, this will take you through to, uh, getting MicroPython onto the Oh, firstly, I'll take you through getting um, the development environment onto your laptop and then MicroPython onto the uh, ESP32 and then um, our software to control some of, some of the hardware and to uh, talk over the network. So that's all, that's all here. Okay, so back to here. Um, so that's a link to the, to the uh, instructions. And uh, as, as I mentioned, it's going to take you through these for five, five steps. The goal being that you should be able to then um, write MicroPython code on your laptop, push it to the robot, re uh, reset it, and off it goes. And uh, the other thing is also a script um, uh, in the software directory called scripts flash lollybot.shell, and that's the thing you should be able to run to flash MicroPython onto the robot and also all the, all the uh, MicroPython scripts in one hit. So that's what, that's what we're trying to get to. So um, MicroPython was chosen because uh, we're, we're really interested in always trying to uh, make uh, affordable hardware that's accessible to as many people as possible. And as one, someone mentioned this morning, um, you know, their kids are learning Python at school. So it just makes it uh, obviously easier for people to get, you know, get into doing embedded uh, programming. Um, the nice thing also about Python is that you, know, you don't have to set up a complex uh, embedded C cross compiler and that sort of stuff, which the Arduino cunningly hides from you. So you just basically boot it up and start typing code. Uh, and it also means if, you, if you're using Python for work, you know, it might be um, you know, for doing web development or um, AI, a lot of machine learning programs in Python. It means you're just using the same language everywhere, which is um, which can be neat. And uh, the other thing, being having a REPL, so you can just type in commands interactively. You can do faster prototyping, and because you've got high-level libraries um, around trans uh, transport and um, uh, uh, networking and so on, uh, you can, and also the uh, access to the hardware is usually by a few, a few simple library calls, it means you can prototype your ideas faster. And, uh, and the implementation of MicroPython is, uh, was primarily being spearheaded by a guy called Damon George, who's one very smart cookie. He writes pretty pretty tight code, so um, we're in safe hands. And uh, there's also Nick Moore, he's uh, at the conference this week, so if you bump into Nick Moore, he's a good, also a good guy to uh, ask about this MicroPython. So once you've got MicroPython installed on the Lollibot, the MicroPython control boots straight into MicroPython, so I'll just quickly try and show you this now. Um, the, the file system is stored on flash memory, and uh, 
and you, you basically, if there's a, a boot.py or a main.py program, it'll run that. Otherwise, it drops straight into the inter interpreter and you just start typing commands. And you can see there's a couple of uh, really handy commands there. If you type help or brackets, you get, it actually gives you um, some example code for um, talking to the hardware and uh, also setting up the Wi-Fi network. If you go help on any, any, any name, so modules and variables and functions, it gives you uh, a little bit of that output there. Um, and in, there's a couple of uh, modules that uh, you wouldn't see on a normal desktop Python, so import machine basically gives you uh, uh, me methods to access uh, all the pins, uh, pulse width modulation, um, and so on. Uh, there's the network um, module for Wi-Fi, and uh, there's also built-in support for LEDs because blinky lights are always good. And uh, if you have pushed a, 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 a Python source file to the machine yourself, you can just go import that file name and it starts running. So let's just see if we can just quickly see what that looks like. So I'm just going to um, reboot the uh, Lollibot. So it a, has, a, has a reset button on it. So actually, that's not the Lollibot. Uh, this, this one's the Lollibot, I think. Um, yep, cool. So it, immediately, it's, it's running, uh, running Python now, setting up the Wi-Fi. It's found the, the LCA network. Uh, thanks, Evil Steve. And it's also already connected to MQTT. Um, it, it, this is running on my laptop, because I wanted to have a bit of low latency, because if uh, Chan's robot battles my robot, I want to win. Um, so now, now we're running MicroPython. If you hit Control C, um, you, you, know, you can start printing, t typing statements. So print one plus three. Oops, hang on. If only I could see my keyboard. One plus three. There we go. So that. And if you can go help, you get you know, lots of handy, lots of handy help about how to um, talk to I2C and set up the networking. And you can go help on something like a, a, a Lollibot, which is one of our um, modules. And you can see. Uh, oops. Lollibot, and you can see uh, that's some of the methods. So talking to motors and uh, sending messages and the left and right motor and stuff like that. It's all sort of also there, accessible. I'm just going to reboot that so it um, becomes useful again. And uh, it's just it's rebooting now. All uh, right. So um, moving on. So if uh, if you want to do, learn a bit more about MicroPython, Nick Moore's got a workshop on uh, the start of Wednesday morning. It's, uh, I think it's a pretty competitive morning for ha uh, hardware at LCA, but. Mix Nix and stuff's good. And he also got some online presentations, um, and he actually went and documented the Lollibot probably better than I did, so more power to him. And as mentioned, we'll do some hacking in Building 11. Um, so the first thing you, you need to do after installing the um, Lollibot software is to configure it. So um, there's some, a, direct, a directory called configuration, and there's some files in there like wifi.py, mqt.py, so this, those are the files you edit to configure. Um, so you'd set up your um, SSID for the, um, the Linux conference and its password. Uh, if you ha it's basically it's an array, so you can have um, SSIDs for home, work, and so on. Just as you move your uh, lollipop around, it'll, it'll find the SSD and use the right password. So it's a sensible thing to do. And then you also um, use uh, configuration uh, MQT.py to um, set up the MQT host port and whatever. Um, typically, just for playing, we use um, IoT.Eclipse.org, which is a hosted server in the US, so 200 milliseconds of latency at least. But it does mean that you don't have to set up an MQT server or anything. It's just it's good to go. And so what you can do is um, configure uh, a remote third-party MQT server. Um, you could use your phone as a, um, as a, a personal hotspot and you're off, you're off and running. Or if you want to do, you can um, simply do an app, get installed Mosquito on your laptop if it's Linux and uh, run a local MQT server. And that just allows you to send messages back and forth to your robot. Uh, it's also a very popular protocol for people doing automation and things like that. So this is the file system layout. So there's a, the boot.py file, which uh, is the first Python file that's executed. Then there's a configuration directory where we've basically got a little configuration file for each of the um, aspects of the robot, so how many LEDs there are, always three. Um, the, lolly, the Lollibot, which is, um, has uh, what, what pins, what, what hardware is on what pins, so you know, the left, left motor is on pin 15, for example, pin and five, I think. Um, and then the, the Wi-Fi. Just so people don't accidentally check in their um, Wi-Fi passwords to, the, to GitHub, because that's always a good way to um, impress people, is just do a GitHub search on passwords and start hacking. Um, the, uh, we've got a wifi.pen that you copy into wifi.py and we've got a git ignore to um, prevent um, the wifi.py being uploaded by mistake. Um, all right, so in the, the directory called lib, when you do an import, um, MicroPython automatically looks in the lib directory, so that's where we've got the lolly.py program that sort of holds it all together a bit, mostly about controlling the, the individual hardware. You can also see the MQT library is there. Um, Simple.py does the basics of MQT, robust basically just adds um, uh, reconnecting if the uh, connection drops out. The uh, MicroPython MQT library doesn't have uh, Keep Alive, which is basically sending heartbeat messages to, um, 
to uh, determine whether the TCP connection is dropped. And so I've actually added that code into the Lollipop, so it's got a, a little bit more robustness. And then there's a library called ICO, which is where I put all my stuff, which is um, generic lead drivers. So not any, this, this same software that's running on the Lollipop is also running, running this, pat, this panel right now. So um, your Lollipop can do um, 2D graphics and lines and circles and text and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, I've just gone and rebooted it by moving around. Um, uh, so yeah, so basically it's got this modular code for like LED, LED drivers and um, MT drivers, Wi-Fi and stuff, and you just basically assemble these modules to for whatever application you're doing. So the configuration files are pretty straightforward. You just um, edit on your laptop. You just edit uh, configuration wifi.py. Um, just add um, uh, tuples of uh, the, the network ID, uh, sorry SSID and password to that list, and uh, then you just do the ampy command. Just go ampy put configuration Wi-Fi to configuration Wi-Fi, and that'll move that file to your your Lollibot, reset it. You now have got a new um, SSID. Um, what we'd like to do in, before too long is have it that if, uh, if it can't find an SSID, that it becomes an access point, you can edit those things. Mark Wolf has done this sort of stuff before, securely with um, Amazon AWS Madness um, in a previous year as a monster piece of work. We haven't done that again for the Lollibot yet, but should do. Uh, MQTT, all you really have to do for that is um, edit the, edit the MQTT.py uh, file and just change the host name to whatever MQTT host you, you like. You can you know, set up your own. Um, or, or whatever. Uh, the topic path is basically the start is, is the, the start of topic path, just so we just avoid collisions with everyone else. And you can um, automatically have the uh, the Lollibot subscribe to other topics if you want, so you can just have it listening just just through that that form. Okay, so MQT for those who don't know it. Um, oh, sorry, sorry, big fun. MQT how I'm using Lollibot. So I've just talked about the configuration file. In libico MQT Pi, there's um, it just provides uh, underlying support like that that bit about connecting to the server, subscribing for topics for you, and then the um, lib uh, micro MQT library is uh, the Python implementation of a uh, MQT client, and the idea is that what you can do is um, if you've got uh, different aspects to um, your project, like you know, you've got motors and you might have um, you know, some automation lights and things like that, is you can use message handlers to um, make callbacks. So uh, so the underlying MQ library will get the message and then it'll look at the, its list of handlers and it'll just direct, the, it'll basically give each handler a chance to pull off the message. So, so it just allows us to have a bit of code separation. And the callback that you give receives the MQT topic and payload. And um, this probably might sound a bit, a bit of gobbledygook, so I'll, I'll show you a code example soon. Maybe that makes it a bit clearer. But I mean, so. Right, so at this point, um, you've installed the Lollibot code on your... So you've installed the Python code on your Lollibot. It's booted up and it's uh, connected to the Wi-Fi and MQT. So we can now start sending it commands. And so um, MQT publish and subscribe are just uh, command line tools for sending MQT messages around. And you basically just provide the, the host name, which is eclipse.org, uh, the topic, which will be Lollibot, your ESP, which has got the unique serial number of your um, Lollibot. And you can just look at the, um, the console log to see that, which we'll look in a sec, and then the command. And so these are some of the messages you can send to um, do things with the LEDs. So I'll just um, see if I can um, uh, do that. So let's let's. Oh, so what we can see here, I've just highlighted. That's that's the um, uh, Lollibot's um, unique ID. And so if we go over here, I should be able to. Uh, I, should, I should have a history of commands here. So I should be able to do something like. Um, ah, okay. First thing I do is actually going to send it a Python command. So I'm going mosquito publish. The host is the IP address of my laptop. That's where the MQT server is. The topic is Lollibot ESP32 ID slash in. So slash in, so I'm listening to the slash in part for that's all the inbound messages. And the Lollibot could go, could publish on slash out. So it might have status like what's the, the uh, reflectance sensor doing or things like that. So if I just send that message, you can see on the left hand screen the number three came up because I actually did an eval of that Python statement. Uh, Rest assured in your code, that's commented out because it's probably a bad idea just to allow anyone on the internet to send Python to your IoT device, which is about the average security of your average IoT device at the moment, um, except LifeX light bulbs. <laughs> anyway, uh, what we can do though is I can send a command like um, LED clear, if I get my brackets right, and hopefully that, that rear green light will go off. Yes, and it did, awesome. Um, the other thing you can do is you can send it um, commands like forward and backwards. And yes, we're ready to, um, to uh, fight um, Jan's robot. Uh, because those commands are really hard to uh, type, um, I've just done some aliases. So uh, go, go right, go left, go forward. So I should be able to just hopefully just take it off, untether it, 
fly, you're free. Off it goes. Okay, John. John, you. Yeah, so. Oh, anyway. All right, here we go. Ah! <laughs> anyway. All right, there we go. Oh, it's going to get ugly. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah. All right, so hopefully by the end of the day we'll have, we'll have 50. All right. So, look, so our goal is to hopefully get everyone up to that stage sooner, sooner or later. Um, all right. So, um, so, so the same way you can just publish these motor commands, and uh, there's scope for improvement. So, um, uh, we should we should have, have it so that we can change the robot's speed, change the turn radius. Oh, someone else's who else is the robot's going? Awesome. We're up to three. Do I see four? Um, so hopefully during this week we'll, um, you know, we can all get together and just um, improve the, the uh, robot's um, capabilities and the messaging sent to it. Now I'm just, we're just sending commands by the command line. Jan, how, how are you controlling your robot, Jan? Uh, MQTT dash app with some buttons. Oh, off, off, straight off the phone? Yeah, so you basically can just download that for your phone and uh, just send MQTT messages right to your robot. Hang a sec. Ah, here we go. Um, or just in your favourite language. You know? It could, could be Haskell, it could be Assembler, just send, send um, MQTT messages and go for it. All right. So the main, uh, let's see, how much time? So the main code's in, uh, kind of in lollybot.py and boot.py. Uh, this is intended to can, contain lollybot specific code, so mostly it's just the motors. But you can see what we, we do is we basically have got functions like lollybot initialize, we just send it the uh, settings, which is the, uh, the pins that the motors are on. Um, there's a command like motor action. And what you send to the motor action command is the uh, duty cycles for each of the motors. So, I reckon I've only got six, but anyway. Um, so you can basically use the motor action command to say I want 100% um, duty cycle on the left wheel, 20% duty cycle on the right wheel, and it will curve. Um, there's some low level code there for motors, so basically uh, to control a motor you'll basically uh, get its pin number, so pin 16 is the, um, is the uh, uh, see, this is, I think this is mine. Um, so pin 16 is this little servo down here. You just wrap that in um, a PWM func uh, class and then, then you can basically use that to set the frequency. Um, 50, 50 hertz is a great frequency for servo motors, which expect a simple every 20 milliseconds. And then um, you set the duty cycle. So if the duty cycle is um, 77, which is about 7.5%, um, that means the servo position is right, right in the middle. If you, if, you lower, if you lower the duty cycle to 40, or be all the way to the left, or, or rotating uh, anti-clockwise, if you go to 115, it'll be all the way to the right. Um, and so, then these, so you can see at the bottom there's commands like lollipop motor commands, you can just send, and you can actually do that on the command line if you want to. All right, so, anyway. Um, in boot.py, this, what, what, this is the uh, code that runs when we first start. You can see that um, we're just importing the lead library. Um, we're getting the configuration, we're initialising it, and it's really hard to talk over you guys. If you, uh, it's, uh, sorry, getting a bit loud down there. Um, and so the first thing we do is we just uh, turn the LED to red, which indicates we're looking for Wi-Fi. We then import the Lollibot code and we initialise it, and the first thing that does is it turns the motors off, because you may have noticed that when you reset the Lollibot, the motors spin for a little bit, and that's a design, a design uh, uh, outcome of, uh, that maybe John can explain. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so the first thing we do is we stop the motors, and then the third thing we do is we, um, where we uh, bring in the, uh, the Wi-Fi library, configure the Wi-Fi library, and then we try to connect to the, um, to the wireless. And so uh, the, the LED will go from red to blue when it's on Wi-Fi, and then it'll go to green when it's on MQT. So all these robots are, have got green LEDs because they're connected to MQT. Um, the last thing the boot.py does is it um, uh, basically brings up uh, MQT, and you can see the main thing there is that we, we're getting the topic path from... Um, going slash ESP32 and then getting the unique ID. We also, and subscribing to that slash in. And then we're, you can see we're also adding message head handlers. One for the LEDs, which you saw before, uh, clearing and setting LED color, and another one for the uh, messages. And then finally we set the uh, color to green. Uh, so c controlling hardware. So we've got, yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, so we've got basically uh, the NeoPixels, the LEDs. We've got um, DC motors, which we control through um, Pulse width modulation. We've got um, the server motor, and we've got uh, 
analog infrared reflectance and the IMU is on I2C. So just briefly, um, this is the amount, five lines of Python uh, basically give you access to the LEDs. So we, we import the library, we've got three, three uh, LEDs, they're sort of daisy chained one after the other. We uh, 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 initiate the uh, NeoPixel library, so the uh, LEDs are on pin two, uh, we give them the length. Time equals true, that's a bit of magic source. That's, uh, I believe that's not very well documented, but the author of the library, um, basically the default is for um, uh, the NeoPixel is running at 400 kilohertz, I think, which almost none of them do. And uh, the way to change that is say time equals true, which is not documented, and that sets it to 800 kilohertz, which is a normal um, bus speed of NeoPixel, so you must do that, that time equals true. And then, right, we now finally can set LED, so NP is a, an array of um, LEDs, so NP0 is the first LED, and you just basically do a, a Python tuple with RGB, so basically 25500 will be red, and then you go NP right. The only twist on this is um, that's for NeoPixel LEDs, these are um, LEDs are APA 106s and the red and the green channels are flipped around. So actually have to, the your tuple has to be green, red, blue. But the, um, out of the library we've done basically does that switch for you. So it's normal. Um, so one last example, the um, server motor. So if this is an exercise, I guess, for the attendees to basically take this, the software as it currently stands and see if you can get this um, front server motor moving. Uh, so to, the raw code to that is, is on the screen now, basically from the machine module, just import the pin library, import, uh, sorry, import the pin function, import, import PWM. Uh, you, get, you get a reference to the server by just wrapping uh, pin 16 as a PWM. Set the duty cycle, to, oh, that's a mistake, that should be server.frequency50. So set the, the frequency to 50 hertz, duty cycle to 77 and the, and the server should be still. If you change that server duty cycle, the, um, this is a continuous rotation server, so it starts spinning forward or backwards. And that minimum, minimum middle or maximum are the this, uh, the duty cycle values you can use to basically go to the minimum, which is full anti-clockwise, middle means stopped, and maximum 115 is full, full clockwise. So that's, that's kind of all I have, and I think that's almost time out. Um, so open to questions or suggestions or... Um, Do you have those Not yet, but soon. soon. So, yep, is that, uh, I know, I know. Yep. so hassle me relentlessly, I'm done now. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, yep. Five extra minutes for questions. Okay, sure. Sure, okay. So, yeah, so will these slides go online? Yes, yes, they will. Um, actually, one of the challenges we had to communicate it to everyone, I guess we can probably send maybe one or two messages out on LCA Slack before it's considered slam, um, spam, so we'll figure something out. Any, any other questions, perhaps? Hmm? A hacking buff. Um, yeah, so Kerry, Kerry's saying if we'll do a hacking buff. Uh, typically what we've done is we've just retired after dinner to um, what a common area. So it seems like there's a common area in this building somewhere, or just over there somewhere. Yeah, so I think at least we'll be doing that. Um, I know, always, I always find there's already a ton of boffs to go to already <laughs> that I'm interested in. I know. But look, if someone wants to organise a boff for these or robots, uh, let's do it. Any, any other questions or thoughts? Okay. Well, just briefly, my, so my plans and maybe some other people's will be to um, contribute software. I've already, already got some great contributions from Jan and I apologise for not having uh, done your pull request, so I'll get on top of that. Um, and so if everyone wants to just fork the code, make pull requests, we'll try and bring, bring all together and make these things do, do more stuff. Well, yeah. Uh, one thing I noticed when I, had, when I flashed mine, it wouldn't flash. I had to unplug it from the board because power was being diverted to the board, even though the board was one running. Okay. It corrupted the flash. Wow. So until I removed the board, ESP32, yep. I could not flash it properly, yep. so that might affect someone else. Okay, so what Mark, so, 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 okay, cool. All right, so what, what Mark's pointing out is that sometimes um, there's issues, that, so sometimes there's issues with the board in terms of trying to flash it, um, and Mark's suggestion is just to pull the, um, power it off, pull the um, uh, Lowland ESP32 out and just uh, flash that on the USB and then put it back in. Um, and it's also mentioning that there's, um, there's these two jumpers that you put on, so they're, up the top there, you can just pull those jumpers out and that, that means the motors are unpowered. Um, look, this, frankly, it's not, uh, so whilst uh, everyone's put a lot of uh, effort in and, and review, it's not a perfect design. It's certainly got some quirks and uh, best, best just to be honest about it and say um, uh, we'll, we'll need to do some workarounds around those quirks from time to time. Like I find the Lowland uh, sometimes is a bit more difficult to use than some of the other dev boards. So anyway, so the advice is um, if you get really stuck, pull it out and, re and, just, and may I have to reflash it. But I uh, have, yes, yeah, sorry. Is this about the delay? Yeah. Yes, okay. So, uh, 
Uh, so, would so you like me to re repeat that for everyone? Or do you have a, or do you have a question? Yeah, there's a solution for it. Yeah, the solution. Okay, yeah. So. Yeah. All right. So, so what 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 happened is uh, the the <laughs> yeah. So various embedded machines, and particularly the DSPs, use different um, USB serial chips. So sometimes it's an FDDI. Uh, uh, in this case, it's a CH340. And it just turns out that the CH340 doesn't play well with um, the AMPY program. And so what they did recently was um, added a, a command parameter hyphen D for delay. Uh, or an, an environment variable AMPY underscore delay. And so if you happen to be using a Lowland or anything that's got a CH340 driver, basically you set the environment variable AMPY underscore delay to one, or just use hyphen D1. You don't have to do that on other development boards. And this is actually, it's in the documentation, but thanks for pointing it out. Oh, yeah, the patch itself. Um, the la okay, well, I'll, I'll, let's, let's chat about it more offline because I found that I had, I had that problem with an older version and the very latest version appears to have fixed it, but, let's, but look, it's a, it's a crazy world. So, yes. Um, yeah, well, okay. th thanks, everyone. Please hey, come. Everybody, thank you, Andy. Thank you.